The following interview was conducted with Marwa and Muwasha. Uh, doctoral uh, received his doctorate from uh, Purdue University in 1981 in uh, electrical and computer engineering. He's currently the senior vice president of external affairs at the World Bank. The uh, the pro the interview is for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, October the 20th, 2008, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Good morning and welcome. Morning. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. I was born in Amman, Jordan, uh, in 1956 uh, to uh, uh, Jordanian parents. I have uh, two uh, brothers and a sister, and I uh, spent my uh, uh, school years until high school in Jordan. Okay. Uh, uh, what? Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your early years. Was that through eighth grade? And then tell us a little about high school. What activities or athletics and whatever? Well, I was actually, I was, I was not a, a great athlete. I was more interested in uh, drama, in acting, and uh, I took part in uh, many, uh, uh, many uh, plays uh, in school uh, right, uh, right until high school and. I think uh, it actually prepared me well for my later years and later career. Were there some plays that you part participated in just at school and uh, while you yes, were there? Yes, every year the school uh, had a major play and uh, I usually, uh, you know, participated in it. Uh, many times I was the lead, uh, the lead actor right. in that play. How large was the school? Was it close to where you lived? It was close, yes. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, a high school but uh, in Jordan, as probably uh, somewhere here, it also had all grades, so uh, it really uh, had, you know, grades one, one through twelve. And uh, I can't remember now how uh, large the whole school is. Probably around a thousand or so. Right. Mm -hmm. How large was your graduating class? Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen Ooh, people. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Then tell us a little bit about what what came next in college. And I understand that did you come to Purdue after you graduated from high school? No, actually I went to the American University of Beirut where I also uh, studied electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the American University of Beirut is a university that was founded by Protestant uh, missionaries in the 19th century in 1866 and uh, uh, is uh, probably uh, the Middle East's uh, premier uh, university until, until uh, today. I went there uh, from 1972 to 76. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last year there in 75, 76, the civil war started in Beirut and uh, I was by then a senior and uh, needed to transfer to an American institution and because of Purdue's uh, reputation in engineering uh, and in fact we had studied uh, books written by Purdue professors, I en ended up coming to Purdue where I finished my senior year at Purdue and then stayed on for my master's and PhD. Okay. Tell us a bit about college, what was the school was like, was it the, the dormitory, did you live on campus? I did not because I came as a senior. Okay. I actually... Uh, I mean, no, when you were at American University. Oh, Purdue. yes. Yeah, well, tell us a bit uh, yes. about that. Uh, in American University, Beirut is a very cosmopolitan city uh -huh. and uh, really had uh, people from all uh, nationalities and uh, 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 it was a it was a institution of uh, you know great learning. Uh, I enjoyed my time tremendously there, even with all the political problems that uh, Lebanon experienced at the time. Uh, AUB is largely an undergraduate uh, 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 university. It had a campus which over. Uh, uh, look to see uh, the Mediterranean, a very nice uh, good kind of good location. Good location, kind of like Berkeley, maybe here and. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, when the missionaries came, uh, yeah, Beirut was not a big city, and they chose a prime piece of land, uh, and uh, it Forward stayed. Forward thinking. <laughs> <laughs> stayed, and it's, it's truly, I think, it offers uh, some of what uh, the United States has, uh, uh, you know, best values. Uh, uh, and uh, even uh, uh, though uh, American policies are not always, uh, uh, you know, policies that uh, people find acceptable, uh, in the region because of the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, the, the values uh, uh, mm -hmm. that this university gave are values that everybody from the extreme right to the extreme left appreciate. Right. Was it just under, is that school just undergraduate or do they have a graduate Largely, program? they do have a graduate program mm -hmm. and, and it is expanding now, sure. but uh, it, it was uh, then largely an undergraduate program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you come to Purdue, to tell us a little bit about that when you first arrived. Had Purdue was, was difficult when I first arrived. I arrived in 1976. Uh, one 
coming from a large cosmopolitan city to West Lafayette was not easy. The weather was, of course, also. Was uh, it, did you come in the fall or in the winter? I came in the fall in, in, in August. Uh, and uh, the first year I was here, we experienced a blizzard uh, where we were, <laughs> if you remember, we. Uh, you know, we're, we're stuck at home for like four or five days. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a very uh, welcoming uh, <laughs> Not coming from time. the warmer climes, no. But, uh, but uh, Purdue really, uh, I grew to, to, to uh, love the city and the people. Uh, I uh, enjoyed my time tremendously here. Uh, people are very friendly, and even though many of them have not uh, really uh, gone outside the United States. I never felt like a foreigner here. I was treated in a mm -hmm. very, very welcoming way. And uh, I have friendships that last to this day and, and consider uh, West Lafayette truly to be a second home. Mm -hmm. Where did you, did you, now you stayed on for both, uh, did completed all your graduate work here there, right? Yes, right? I, I, uh, I completed my uh, bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. then my master's degree, and my, uh, and my PhD mm -hmm. at Purdue. Where, where, you, where did you live when you were on campus? I lived several places. When I first came, I lived in Lafayette on 6th Street, right by the then uh, railroad tracks. I don't know if they're still there or not. Uh, could not, uh, could not, uh, uh, you know, did not like the, the, the the, the, the train uh, uh, coming at night, so I uh, then uh, At the odd hours. Yeah. <laughs> then I lived in West Lafayette in, at uh, Soldiers Home Road, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a group a complex called uh, Riverview then. I think, uh, I think it's called something else now, but uh, that's what I uh, yeah. Did you have family more. at that time when you came? Or? No, 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 okay. no. I was single. I was single. Uh, uh, Purdue had then, and I think still does, uh, a large... Uh, Arab uh, student population, mm -hmm. and I ended up, in fact, becoming the president of the Organization of Arab Students at Purdue. Oh, good, mm -hmm. very good. Then, after graduation, tell us a little about what transpired after that, your career path. Well, like. my, uh, d in fact, uh, even while I was at Purdue, I started developing an interest in public life, and uh, both through my, uh, you know, time as president of the organization, but also. Uh, I started feeling that uh, that I'm more interested in uh, in politics and public affairs than I was in en engineering, and uh, I contributed uh, many articles then to the Exponent uh, while I was at Purdue. Were you on the staff of the Exponent? No, I oh, wasn't. No, okay, just okay. Uh, just contributed articles. Uh -huh. uh, when I came back, uh, I lived in I, I worked in engineering, but at the same time, I started writing a political column for one of uh, our English dailies uh, in Jordan, just out of interest, and uh, uh, continued to do me, you returned to your country then after To my country, to return. Jordan. Uh -huh. In fact, I uh, first uh, worked in Saudi Arabia for two years in uh, engineering, uh, then came back to Jordan and, uh, and worked in engineering as well, uh, but uh, did the column uh, you know, on the side. Uh, and I did this for like uh, seven or eight years. Uh, until uh, <coughs> one of uh, our prime ministers uh, asked me to become his press secretary because of my uh, column in the paper, and that was my introduction to the world of politics. Okay, and then what, 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 what went on next? I did, this for, experience. I did this for a year, mm -hmm. and uh, after a year he asked me to head uh, our information uh, office in Washington. Uh, this is an office that covered uh, the media and Congress for the Jordanian government, part of the embassy uh, in Washington. And uh, I did that. Uh, uh, I did that for a year. Uh, a year after that, the Middle East peace process uh, started, uh, the Madrid Peace Conference, when uh, President George Bush Sr. Uh, assembled all the parties uh, to uh, restart uh, 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 you know, a, a peaceful negotiations to end mm -hmm. the Arab-Israeli conflict. And I was picked by my government to become Jordan spokesman uh, to these peace talks. If you remember, Hanan Ashrawi, for example, was the Palestinian spokeswoman then. And uh, I did that for four years while uh, doubling as also head of the information office in Washington. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the talks uh, were held in Washington as well, so <laughs> I did not have to travel. <laughs> That was uh, very nice. And then, uh, and then Jordan and Israel signed a peace treaty in 1994, and the late King Hussein asked me to become Jordan's uh, first ambassador to Israel uh, after the signing of the peace treaty. Mm -hmm. 
What was your, did you, any, you need to share anything on that uh, when you were over there? Uh, it was uh, probably my toughest assignment. Uh, 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 you know, uh, Israel was an enemy state for uh, many, many years. Uh, a lot of Jordanians are of Palestinian origin and uh, left their homes in 48 when Israel was created. So it was not a diff an easy assignment for me. Uh, but it's an assignment that I learned a great deal from. And mm -hmm. uh, I did not stay there for uh, a long time. I stayed there only for a year because uh, the government uh, then changed in Jordan, and I was uh, asked to become government spokesman and minister of information. So I left Israel after after a year. From there, I came to the States as uh, uh, ambassador to the United States from 97 to uh, the beginning of 02. And then I became Jordan's foreign minister for three years from 02 to 04. Okay. In the meantime, did you uh, did you get married and you have, you have a family? Yes, I got married. Uh, I got married while I was still uh, in 1987, while I was still uh, working uh, in Jordan, uh, both in engineering and uh, you know uh, writing my political column. And then uh, when, of course, uh, uh, we came to Washington uh, together, uh, my wife was pregnant with our first child, who is now attending Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have a double alumni, right? You're, you're broadening your alumni base, I see. <laughs> oh, well, now I know a couple of things that you, um, and your, your current, uh, you're also a member of the Jordanian Senate, were you? Yes, yeah. I, uh, the, well, so after. For our researchers, tell us a little bit about what that involved. Uh, after uh, after uh, 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 my tenure as foreign minister, I became uh, deputy prime minister in charge of reform, and I led an effort in Jordan for uh, uh, a ten-year plan for political and economic and social reform in the country, and uh, then I joined the Senate. The Senate in Jordan is not a, is not a. Uh, it's like a House of Lords, so it's not an, uh, an elected office. It's uh, it's an you're office appointed. that uh, you're appointed to, because we have two houses: uh, the upper house, which is the Senate, and the lower house, which is uh, an elected uh, house. Uh, and I did that uh, for a year. Uh, then I was asked uh, by the World Bank to join as Senior Vice President for External Affairs, and I did that since March, uh, March 2007. Right. And tell us, and you're based in Washington, D.C.? I'm now again based in Washington, D.C. This okay. is my third uh, stint in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> How has it changed a lot, though, have, since you've been there? Do you find many changes? Oh, yes, a lot of changes. I mean, both the city has changed, but the political landscape has changed as well, uh -huh. uh, particularly after September 11. I think uh, uh, many changes to, to the city and, and the political landscape, but uh, people's uh, concern, of course, about security and, and, and the, their own personal and, and country security. Uh, uh, you know, I had, uh, I, I worked both with the Clinton administrations and the Bush administration, and Obviously, there are two very different administrations uh, as well, so sure. lots of changes. Yes, I mean. Now, now uh, let's go to the schools, uh, and you've had some affiliations. Congratulations on your honorary doctorate. That's very nice. Tell Thank us how you. I usually ask people, sometimes it was a surprise or, you know, how they handled it. It was, actually. Good. It was a, a very pleasant surprise, and it's one of the greatest honors I feel I've received. Uh, Purdue means a great deal to me. I've uh, kept my contact with Purdue since I graduated. Uh, I made it a point to visit almost every year. And then uh, with the peace process, I came here a couple of times and gave lectures about the peace process uh, in the early 90s. So when I was told that uh, uh, you know, I would uh, receive this honor, I was, I was truly uh, greatly surprised and, and, and pleased. Uh, and it's, it's you know, it's a mu it's much nicer than receiving the actual degree. <laughs> <laughs> did, how did you uh, did uh, the president call you, or do you get a letter, or how does it come? I, about? I got a letter, okay. and I think uh, my professor uh, Dave Landgrieb, who is still living at Purdue, was sure. uh, I think instrumental in this. Uh, uh, but I got a letter from the university saying that uh, they've decided to do this. I came in '99 with uh, uh, my wife. Uh, uh, president Beering was still the president then. Uh, and uh, they had a, a lovely ceremony, and I truly enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of you sort of, um, you serve on the advisory board, and so for the researcher, tell us a little bit about the advisory board for the electrical and computer engineer. This is a board that meets once a year, okay. and I was asked by the current head of uh, uh, electrical engineering, Mark Smith, to uh, serve on this advisory board uh, uh, about. 
oh, four or five years ago. Uh, I remember while I was foreign minister, I think. And I've attended, uh, uh, you know, I've attended meetings, uh, uh, not every single year, uh, but as my schedule allowed. And again, it was a, a true honor to be able to contribute even in yeah. a small way to my old school. Right. You interacted with the students. Tell us a little bit about when you're here. Do you inter you touch base with some of the students too? Some of your reflections as you come back and forth over the time, uh, like ser serving on the advisory board. Some of the well, the family. students have, uh, uh, you know, I think become much smarter than <laughs> when I was here. Uh, more exposed, certainly. I'm very glad that uh, Purdue now has this policy of. Uh, 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 you know, admitting a fairly large number of foreign students, so right. the diversity uh, of the university is certainly something that I don't think uh, was that apparent during my time here uh, 30 years ago. Uh, there's a there's a very vibrant uh, and thriving foreign student community at Purdue that I think is is a very uh, positive development. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, also the campus itself and the city itself uh, have grown. Uh, uh, I'm very pleased to see uh, a, a much nicer campus uh, with less cars, with uh, very beautiful landscaping. Uh, truly, uh, you know, the university has done a wonderful job at this. Right. Um, certainly, when you were here, you could enter from Northwestern. You know, for the the mall. Remember? Oh, absolutely. Was yeah. uh, there was no building between Double E and Physics, and you could. Uh, enter with your car. Uh, uh, you could also park behind the Purdue Union and Stewart Center. You can no longer do That's that right. now. That's right. I remember uh, that too. So it's, it's, it's a more walking campus now, a, a more beautiful one. Yes, right. Okay. The, um, now you remember uh, Ada uh, Kapanu. You want to tell us a little bit about what that uh, membership and about that affiliation is? Uh, the th this is a membership that uh, um, Electrical engineering students who achieve a certain is academic. It on, is uh, this one of their honoraries? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, and I, I I was admitted both to that and to uh, Phi Beta uh, Phi Beta Phi, which, which is the uh, the engineering uh, 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 honor society as well. Uh, so I was a good student uh, at Double E, even though I left the field. Uh, but uh, you sort of missed that. It's been a, been a while. Do you try to keep in touch though? I do, I do, I do. I've always felt, though, that uh, I think uh, Purdue uh, Engineering has uh, uh, prepared me well uh, for the career that I'm in now. I think that, uh, you know, uh, people find it strange that an engineer would find himself uh, in politics. But I think that uh, engineering gives you a, a structured mind, uh, a way to approach problems and to solve them. Uh, Without, uh, with objectivity and uh, you know without emotion and I think uh, these are all uh, traits and that uh, that have served me well good now let's see we're going to ask you if you have a um, you part you participate do you have an alumni do you participate in the alumni at all oh yes passion? yes Tell I'm, us a, a, about I'm your a lifetime member uh, of the, the okay. alumni association at Purdue I continue to uh, you know receive uh, all their uh, uh, material I uh, I'm a very avid Purdue fan, both in uh, football and basketball. Uh, I follow men and women's uh, teams, uh, and I've done this uh, throughout my career. So uh, it's one of the things I, I truly enjoy. When I was when I was here as a student, even though you know American football is uh, something that uh, no <laughs> foreigner is supposed to understand, but I just fell in love with the university spirit. Uh, being in a stadium with 70,000 other people it's truly colorful, right? is, uh, is nice. Right. Is nice. We, when we walked in the studio, you saw Mark Herman's name. This is the studio where they do the filming, and he, he was playing when you were here. Mark Herman was playing. Uh, uh, coach Young then was the coach, and uh, Mark Herman was a first-team All-American. Uh, Purdue football uh, was doing uh, very well then. We went to, uh, you know... Went to a bowl, I believe. Went to a bowl, uh, uh, several bowls. Uh, if I can remember, we went to the Peach Bowl uh, first year or second year I was here, and, and I went and attended that in person. Uh, but we, we went to other Liberty Bowl, I, th I think, and, and other bowls. Uh, and in basketball also, uh, we had Joe Barry Carroll at the time, uh, he first pick, you know. Uh, did very well. Uh, right. Did very well, uh, right. uh, and, and, and others as well. Russell Cross in my time also. Uh, so it was truly exciting. 
What was your feeling the first time you walked into Ross Eight Stadium? Was that the first time you've been to a, a football game? It was the first time, and I just fell in love. Uh, uh, I did not understand a thing, you know, about the game. And I, uh, a group of friends that I had met here, took me there, and uh, uh, truly, I did not understand anything. But I just fell in love with the atmosphere, <laughs> <laughs> and I quickly learned after that. <laughs> the jumbotron was not there, but now you can follow the, the instant replay. <laughs> Uh, tell us a little about your family. You have one son here, and I have uh, one son, uh, Omar, who's 18. Uh, just started uh, as a freshman uh, at Cranert. Uh, I have a daughter, Hannah, who's uh, 15, as a 10th grader, uh, who lives with me and my wife, Lean, uh, in Washington D.C. Uh -huh. And uh, so she has three more years to go. Uh, 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 like I said, we, we we moved back to Washington. Uh, 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 last year, and uh, uh, um, with Omar being here, it give us all a chance to uh, come and visit often. There you go. You're closer than right. Yeah, <laughs> you, were, you were talking about the campus changes, but also Chauncey Village has changed a lot. I think the right. campus um, has expanded, certainly with Discovery Park. Yes, it yeah. has expanded. Uh, well, Discovery Park certainly, right. uh, you know, Neil Armstrong. Uh, right. But even uh, before then, uh, the technology building was not there when uh, when I was at Purdue. Uh, the, uh, the the MSEE building between uh, between E and physics. Uh, and the mall that the and the mall the uh, it's very nice. Yes. It is. It is really very nice. Uh, it's a uh, it's it's much more uh, eye appealing uh, than it used to be. Uh, and, and that's nice. I mean, I think, like I said, Purdue has done a wonderful job with this. And then there are things that have not changed, which is also good. Because right. uh, you know, you'd like to come back and Well, and Harry's see is still there. Chocolate, Harry's chocolate shop is still <laughs> there. Uh, 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 the triple X. Triple X, certainly. Uh, uh, so, I mean, you know, there are things that, uh, that uh, remind you of uh, do you, uh, uh, the levy, the levy has changed. Or Chauncey, has Chauncey Village has changed since Chauncey you've been Chauncey Village has changed a lot. I mean, right. when in my time, it was v hardly any stores there. Uh, uh, the, I remember the last year I was here, the, a Greek uh, place uh, opened, the Parthenon, which is still, which is still there now. Right. But you had none of the other places uh, around uh, around the, the village, um, uh, and not just that, but also. Uh, across from Chauncey Village, there are now a lot more places where students can sit and uh, enjoy coffee or dessert. Right, or, exactly. Uh, there's more. Uh, there's more cafe ambience. styles uh, around campus that uh, were not there when I was there. In my time, the really meeting place was uh, the sweet shop, which is uh, Pape's now, uh, which did change. Uh, in fact, I, if I can be uh, candid, like the old place better, <laughs> right. but. Uh, I, but that was, I remember what was different, right? That was a meeting. That was our meeting place uh, at the Purdue Union all the right. time. The bookstore was here when you were here, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Right. Uh, the bookstore was there. Uh, Vaughn's was there. Uh, uh, Follett's, uh, you know, all of them. A few of them in that area there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how about a, f a favorite Purdue tradition that you'd like to share with us? You got one of them? Well, I think uh, you know. I think just going to to the stadium, uh, both to to the football games, but also going to Mackey Arena and uh, and the basketball. I truly enjoyed uh, feeling feeling the spirit there, and uh, I hardly missed any game uh, in my five years at Purdue. Hardly missed any keep, home. And game. you keep track of it by on the TV. Probably. I I keep track on TV uh, through the internet. Uh, 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 so, I mean, I, uh, I follow very closely what right. is going on. Now, one of the things that uh, you're here for is to, uh, you're going to be giving a lecture tomorrow. So for the research, tell us a little bit about the book that uh, you'll be talking about in your lecture for that. I, I uh, recently wrote a book called The Arab Center, The Promise of Moderation. And uh, I uh, talk about my own experience uh, throughout the last 20 years. Uh, in uh, on two issues that I've uh, been closely involved with, peace and reform in the Middle East. It's a book about Arab moderates, uh, where they have succeeded and where they have failed, but uh, a first-hand account of uh, what went on. Uh, uh, in our area, most Arab politicians don't write uh, in English, and therefore I feel that the history of the region has largely been written from the outside. This is an attempt to really contribute uh, 
to the history through uh, a, a practitioner that has been mm -hmm. there uh, inside. And I, I uh, you know, I hope it would be of interest to uh, uh, the students here. Uh, peace in the Middle East is something of importance, not just to the region, but to U.S. Right. national interests as well. Right, yes. Um, how about an outstanding event in your life? Uh, certainly, uh, the time that uh, when I was given an honorary degree from Purdue, I felt it was an, it was an honor that uh, uh, I, I truly appreciate it to this day. Um, uh, Purdue also at the Alumni Center has a, a picture of me uh, uh, together with uh, uh, people like John Wooden and, and Bob Greasy. And, uh, uh, so it, it, it's, truly, uh, it's truly an honor to yeah. be part of Purdue. And in closing, would you like to share some comments, overall reminiscences, whatever, for the researchers as you look back through your time with the career and things that you've been doing currently? Well, uh, as you re reflect a little bit. I, 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 uh, a lot of people ask me uh, uh, of why I, I made the switch and, uh, from engineering, uh, sure. as I said, to politics. And uh, I always say that uh, it really does not matter, uh, you know, which career you end up with as long as you like what, uh, what you do. And this is an advice I always give to students, uh, to just follow their passion and never to feel that uh, what they have done I I is a waste if they want to switch. I think that we are living in times where, you know, keeping one job is no longer sort of uh, the cool thing to do. Uh, uh, it is very, very normal now for people to, to change, and uh, I think they should uh, follow their heart and feel that uh, Purdue gives them a very solid education and very good preparation for whatever they want to do in the future. All right, and they keep in touch with their alumni too. It's, you have a very, is there alum, you got an alumni chapter in? in uh... We have an alumni chapter in Jordan, uh, and a very active one. Uh, Purdue has, because of its engineering, uh, uh, you know, reputation has attracted a lot of Jordanian students. I would estimate the number of Jordanian uh, graduates of Purdue with no less than 300 people, maybe. So we uh, uh, we have a very active club and uh, and uh, continue. See, that's your active, your alumni member. participation, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you have to mentor these people, right? <laughs> oh, any any closing, any comments or uh, in, anything closing, any additional that you'd like to share with us? Well, just, uh, just to say that I'm grateful for this opportunity. Uh, I think it's great that uh, Purdue documents uh, this history in the way it does. And uh, uh, best of luck. Good. Thank you very much. This Thank concludes you. the interview. Thank you very, very much. <coughs>